say I spend too much time in the forge. They think it ain't befitting a king. Ha! You don't forge legendary weapons like mine while sitting on a throne. The lands of Cosmodan are mine. And when I bring the pain, lads, it's hammer time! Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the America's Winter Preliminary. My name is CJ Osmo, QD Sanders. Joining me on the desk is Cora and Kevin, two of the newer faces on the Hearthstone casting desk. We're a little bit more than halfway through the day, and we've already seen five players qualify for the America's Championship in just a few weeks. Three more matches to go, which means three more tickets to punch. Cora, I want to come to you first. You're sort of new to the, the whole casting mm -hmm. thing. Uh, how have you been enjoying it so far? Have any of these players that we've seen qualify surprised you or particularly impressed you so far? No, I'm having a great time. I, the last couple games I did have off, so, but I was watching in the back. Mm -hmm. So we saw Chalky with a quick 3-0. Uh, I thought that was really impressive, but not necessarily unexpected. And then we just saw Amnesiac, 15 years old, playing for Archon and already advancing to next month's championship. I mean, that is that is incredibly impressive. When I was 15, I was playing Pokemon. I, that's, <laughs> that's about it. It's maybe, it's maybe some Smash Melee, like, you know, but nothing competitive. And, and he is, you know, just incredible. So I'm really excited to see what the next couple of games have in store for us. And Kevin, I do not envy you because in your first weekend of casting, you had to cast a Freeze Mage Mirror. So I'm sorry for that, but how have you been enjoying it so far? Outside of the Freeze Mage Mirror, it's been great. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, on the whole, I think the games have been awesome. The players that have gotten through, there's a lot of exciting stories to tell. We get to see Chalky take a run at a real championship title. Uh, my personal pick in Chess Dude, which I think is really awesome. Uh, and obviously Amnesia, the youngest player that I can name off the top of my head on the competitive scene. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a really great opportunity for all these players and has been a real treat. And I'm really excited to finally after the entire weekend has almost passed, get on the desk with the other amateur caster and let the two of us really kind of do our thing. Yeah, I'll have to wrangle you guys around, <laughs> uh, Yeah, we're but, just going to be so wrangle, extreme. Yeah, it's, it's, it should be fun. But let's talk about our next matchup a little bit. Uh, it is going to be Nostum from Team Grand National Champions and Snail, who is a surprise story. He's actually the tavern hero winner from the Buenos Aires, Argentina Fireside Gathering location. So... Uh, it's a crazy story to see one of the tavern heroes make it this far. Yeah, no, that's insane. We've had some really amazing players from South America advance so far, and it really makes it known that this is not just the North American Championship. This is the America's Winter Preliminary, and I'm so excited to see players like Nostom, players tavern hero players and that is just incredible somebody who had to go to a fireside gathering before played through a bracket already and now has come this far and may in fact advance even further that's got to be really exciting mm -hmm. and we've kevin we've seen nostum he, he does have the patron warrior in his list but patron warrior as a whole has kind of struggled a little bit uh, on average throughout the weekend uh, is this a deck that surprised you uh its performance surprised you coming in here in a, in a way, yes. I mean, I think personally coming in, I was really expecting Patron Warrior to do a lot better than it has, in large part because there are so many things in the sort of regular stable of decks that everybody else has brought that Patron should perform much better against. It feels like it should have a much stronger chance against Secret Paladin, mm -hmm. against Zoo Warlock, but it hasn't really shone through for anyone yet in the games that we've had up on the stream. Yeah, I, oh, one big thing is... Patron Warrior, it, it is a warrior deck, but it doesn't get those automatic, you know, semi-automatic wins against uh, Freeze Mage. It struggles, and we've seen so much Freeze Mage today. Tons uh, of A Freeze lot Mage. of mm -hmm. the players, if not all of the players, I think, that have qualified so far for the America's Championship have been playing Freeze Mage. So maybe that's where Nostrum has been struggling. But keep it, look at this. Nostrum's Freeze Mage is actually banned out, and Snail's Warrior's banned out. So we're taking both of those decks that were sort of the, you know, question marks coming in, uh, or the high impact classes coming in have are gone. So Nostrum finally gets to play that Hunter again. I'm excited to see a Hunter match. I haven't casted a Hunter match yet uh, this weekend, so it's going to be really nice to see. It's not necessarily a lesser used class. It used to be the most popular class by far, um, but as far as competitive play now, rarely seen. So I'm excited for that. And honestly, I'm just happy I don't have to cast Nostum playing Freeze Mage. If Snail has it, then we're in for another Freeze Mage. Uh, yeah. But 
the Hunter is going to be, I think, a nice change. I mean, Hunter, the third least represented class tournament wide this mm. weekend, and I think that does speak to the fact that it hasn't really done phenomenally well for anybody. Yeah. Nostam probably the only player that's gone this far with Hunter in his lineup. True. Yeah, the other two below it are Brogue and Priest. So, you know, a couple months ago or even all of last year, people would have been saying Hunter will never find itself in a situation where it's lumped into the same category as Rogue and Priest. But you know what? We saw Chess Dude playing both Rogue and Priest already <laughs> yes, advanced. Did. So there's no reason yeah. Nostam on the back of this Hunter can't also go through to next month. All right, well, we're jumping into game number one of this match between Snail and Nossum. It is going to be Secret Paladin taking on Hunter. And we know that Nossum's Hunter is a very fast version of the Hunter. Kevin, talk to me about a little bit about this matchup in general. I mean, personally, I'm looking at the opening hands. I'm looking at the opportunity here, and I like where Snail's starting hand looks like it's going to go. Nostum is really going to be looking to take advantage of a couple of key cards that help to define this matchup. In particular, his trap selection and the opportunity to unlock a big Unleash the Hounds turn, because that's really how both Hunter and, on the flip side, maybe Rogue using Phantom Knives, attempt to respond to the pressure that Muster for Battle can apply. Yeah, yep. and especially with a more aggressive Hunter, you can combine the Knife Juggler with the Unleash the Hounds and sort of use it against uh, the Paladins and Muster for Battle. So I was actually a little bit surprised to see Nostum uh, toss back that Unleash the Hounds in his opening mulligan, but he's got the Knife Juggler. We're assuming two Hounds in the deck, so it's likely that he will draw another one at some point. Hopefully it'll be on time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we can all agree that Hunter, especially the more aggressive ones, usually favored in this matchup. They just sort of point the damage at the face and the Secret Paladins don't usually have a way to block much of it. Uh, Sludge Belcher is a key, but Cora, what, what's the key for the Secret Paladin to win in a matchup like this one that's not so favorite for them? The Secret Paladin actually needs to play really defensively in this matchup, and I'm really liking that Snail has that Sludge Belcher. He has the True Silver Champion. Four points of health may not seem like a lot, but it essentially negates two of the Hunter's hero powers, which can be a huge deal over time. And the Sludge Belcher, we just saw Nostum throw down that Iron Beak Owl, which there is usually only one of, so the Belcher will be really annoying for Nostum to have to deal with. This is such a critical turn, too, for Snail to be put in a position where his only option is to use the hero power as Paladin. There's so many good two-drop minions, so many secrets, so many things that should have worked out for him in the early game, and instead, he does have a really nice set of upcoming turns and some really good things that he can use to I battle wonder. his way back, but this is not a really good place to be as the Paladin player when you really want to actually get on the offensive and force the Hunter player to respond to your threats, not advance their own. Yeah, it's... It's rough when you you aren't able to be proactive against uh, such, such an aggressive hunter, and we'll see how that's going to affect the matchup. But um, yeah, it, it seemed like a mid-range paladin start, but mm -hmm. we did see the secret keeper, so we know yeah. there are secrets in there. Mysterious challenger would probably be the biggest draw right now, just because it would thin out his deck and let him draw some of those crucial ones, like maybe the second true server champion, which would play into effect, or second belcher if he runs one, would also help quite a bit in this matchup. Yeah, and Nostum actually gets that knife onto the recruit, which is really useful for him because if Snail wanted to play the true silver, he could clear off the knife juggler, but now he cannot run that 1-1 one -one into either of Nostum's other minions. The Shredder is a nice pickup. It trades into, I mean, you're hoping the whole board. Ideally, Nostum would have to throw the knife juggler and then you know a 2-3 might come out and you would have to throw the others in. But as we can see, he's just gonna go ahead and use that kill command. Usually you wanna save it for damage, but if you can get a nice board this way and get you know just minion damage, the Paladin's face like he's doing right now, it's a lot more efficient. The, the real concern I think for Nostum right now is that with only the Arcane Golem left in hand, he's looking at what kind of clock he needs to put his opponent on to actually close this game out. Sludge Belcher's gonna have a huge impact on that and right now he's in a position where he's not actually in a really great spot if he wants to try and close this game out quickly. His opponent still has 20 life after that juggle. Yeah, and that's not the juggle that he wanted to. If that hit the Sludge Belcher, that would have made it a clean clear with the Arcane Golem. He could have ran either the Leper Gnome, if he wants the immediate damage now, uh, or the Knife Juggler in to sort of preserve that health. And it, it would have been a lot more face damage. Now he has to give up his Knife Juggler, which with Unleash the Hounds just mm -hmm. drawn, that's got to feel pretty rough. No, you think he's going to trade the Juggler? Oh, now, well, this is less damage, but yeah, see? It, yeah, he kind of has to at yeah. this point. Run it in, go for to face. But at the same time, he's given Snail <laughs> one more mana. Essentially accelerated his turns to the point where now he can play a Lotha been a hero power or the knife juggler and the cog hammer is actually really nice as well and then t the next 
the very next turn can go ahead and play that Tyrion, which he would not have been able to if Nostum had not played the Arcane Golem, but unfortunately for Nostum, it was really his only choice. And Nostum early on used his Iron Beak Owl to try and get rid of the Divine Shield off of a Shielded Minibot, which at yeah. the time was absolutely the correct play, but yeah. it, now that the game has dragged on and is moving through the mid-game stages, that's going to come back to hurt him. Yeah, occasionally Hunter players will tech in Double Owl, but it's such a situational card. It's fantastic in some situations, game-winning in some, but, you know, a dead card in others, can't find a use for it in others, just becomes a, be a beast for kill command in some situations, so... Oh, wow, this is not the play that I expected. No, I didn't anticipate this either. Snail going down to 10 health. Fortunately for him, Nostum's hand does not have what he needs to deal that damage at this point, but if he had something like a Leroy, a Quick Shot, which we're assuming is in the deck, Flame Juggler, I'm actually really surprised to see. I like that in more aggressive decks, but I haven't seen it teched into, you know, even hybrid or face hunters at this point. So that's that's really interesting to me. This is really scary, though, if you're Snail in this position. I mean, nine health is not a, a whole lot. You're still in a position where a beast into kill command and hero power could actually put you in a position where you're going to lose the game, even with Tyrion on board. Yeah, unfortunately for Snail, Nostum already got rid of one kill command in the early game, and that Unleash the Hounds isn't going to do much. Sometimes the face and hybrid hunters can tech two owls. It actually works with the kill command, so that makes it a little bit better for them. But if he's not going to draw it here, it's it's really not going to make any difference. This is going to be hard for Nostum to come back from unless, I mean, we got the Lotheb coming out from Snail. It's likely he will be able to kill him faster yep. than Nostum can draw cards. Yeah, he's going to put him on a two turn clock here. So uh, that probably means Nostum is going to be locked at the game, especially with Lotheb. Explosive Trap, he can try and bluff that, but he's not hero powered, so there's really no point. Uh, especially in giving away information, mm -hmm. like which traps he's actually running. So Nasim is going to go ahead and concede out of game one. Has yeah. to not feel too great after that game, going into a favorable matchup and taking the loss. No, that's definitely not a good start. You want you want to cue that hunter into mm -hmm. the paladin. The Unleash the Hounds is so strong, and you can get so much damage very, very quickly. But unfortunately, I think playing that owl on the shielded minibot was just... It was right at the time, but you know, knowing what we know now, it would have been better if he saved it. But let's be honest here, I think it's really cool and really exciting that we just watched a tavern hero from Buenos Aires yeah. go up one nothing in this match that is going to decide which one of these players advances to the America's Winter Championship next month, and how cool would it be for one of those eight players to be someone who just showed up and said, yeah, I'm going to play in a fireside gathering and see what I can do. I think that's an incredible opportunity. Yeah, and this is, you know, all the matches that we have left for the day are lower bracket matches, which means it's win or go home. So... Uh, the loser of this series has to try again in the spring. <laughs> they actually do get points. I mentioned it early on the stream, but it's a, a fact that a lot of people don't know. For finishing highly in the winter preliminary, you actually secure quite a few points moving towards the spring preliminary. So it rewards the people that do well early in the year. So even if one of these players loses, they, they still put themselves in a good spot to come back and try again in the spring, which I think is a great thing. Yeah, of course, and they actually uh, secure themselves a little bit of prize money, so they didn't come out for nothing, but they definitely want to get that win, move on to the tournament next month, and make themselves even more money and even more of a name for themselves. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the $2,500 is exciting, but I have to think, for both of these players, the real opportunity at this point is they want to go to the championship. Yeah. Free, free trip to California, anyone? I'm yeah. liking mine so far. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's pretty good. But we talked a lot about Snail, so let's start talking about Nostum. He's on a, a, a pretty... Um, interesting team. He's on a team called Grand National Champions, which is actually a team owned, run, and operated by popular streamer Casey Tron, which is uh, an interesting fact. But those guys, I, I talk to them a lot. I practice with them a lot. They work super hard. Nostum mm -hmm. and the rest of his team are guys that you'll find participating in every single open that they can get their hands on. They're always testing decks. Uh, Any time of the day, if you're like, hey, what are you doing? They're always like, oh, we're you know in a Skype call or in a Google Hangout trying to practice decks so it, it's good to see that that hard work pay off at least for one of the guys in that practice group and yeah. uh, uh we're just waiting on um snails restarting his well no we're not waiting on it anymore we're in. yeah for it. <gasps> is that a tempo it's mage? a tempo mage Be still my heart we've got a tempo mage all weekend we've been waiting for this a mage that wasn't a freeze mage the first one we're gonna in get two it two days i've never in my days been happy to see a tempo mage but this is actually a nice change of pace. Praise Lord Kappa, it's a flame waker. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, even APX Void, a player who's known in North America for being the guy that always has Mana Worm on turn one, that climbs the legend every season with the Temple Mage, didn't bring it. He brought Freeze, Freeze Mage. He betrayed his brethren, his kind. But you know what? He gave his luck to Snail because we see that Mana Worm on turn one, that Sorcerer's Apprentice on tur turn two, and the Flame Waker in hand. Yeah. And you know what? I'm thinking this might even be a full gold Tempo Mage. I have a full gold Temple Mage. It's actually one of the easier <laughs> decks to craft because there's there's not like epics. Mm -hmm. There's a few rares like Flame Waker and Unstable Portal. The only legendaries that you have to craft golden are Dr. Boom, Lothab, and Archimage Antonitis. I, I say that, but that sounds a lot when, it sounds like <laughs> when you say it out loud. Yeah, it's not oh, no. You only need like all 20 of these cards. I oh, sound yeah. like a huge nerd now that I just said I crafted a golden temple. Nah, you're fine. So which which of these players, TJ, do you like here in terms of this this particular matchup, Hunter versus Tempo Mage? Well, this matchup's actually pretty uh, Hunter favored, in my opinion. But there are things that Tempo Mage can do if they have a great start that can really slow things down. Tempo Mage doesn't have ways to block damage, and that's one of the main things that Freeze Mage, or sorry, that uh, decks that play against Hunter struggle with is they don't ways to block damage. Yeah, they can. You know, make crazy things happen with Flame Wakers, but at the end of the day, they're still taking damage every turn. So, uh, but this is an incredible start from Snail. It mm -hmm. looks like. Yeah, but a small misplay there. He chose to clear off the Lepernome instead of the Iron Beak Owl. The Owl is a beast, which means he can go ahead and kill command the other Flame Waker and then trade into the Flame Waker that has been silenced. So, that actually makes quite a big difference. Yeah, this does leave, unfortunately, Snail in a position where his game plan has to change. Uh, he's going to be looking very carefully at how he can keep control of the board. Because like TJ said, there's no way for him to recover once he's behind. If he's taking face damage and ultimately losing the game because of it, he runs out of options really fast. Yeah, and I think he recognizes that that was definitely a small misplay, probably playing a little bit quickly, and I'm sure it's been a long weekend so far. So fatigue is, is definitely coming in as a factor for these players. Real life fatigue. Not even these just game fatigue. These decks are never in a million years. They're running out of cards in yeah. their own life. Yeah. Wow. Deep. Very yeah. deep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Snail, look at him. He, he looks visibly stressed. You know, mm -hmm. in between turns, he's, he's got his, his head in his hands. He's, he's running them through his hair. He, he does look stressed. And so uh, that does play a big part. You heard uh, Amnesia talking about it. He said it's normal when you want to win to have stress, but it can affect your decision making. Yeah, definitely. Uh, lucky for Nostrum, he's got that second eagle horn bow. The mad scientist bringing out a secret. It is not a bear trap because we can see that he can play the one in his hand. So I'm going to assume explosive. Um, we did see explosive earlier. Yeah, we did. This is going to come down to the wire, though. I think with Doctor Boom being played, Snail has the potential with Boombot hits to put Nostrum on a two-turn clock, mm -hmm. assuming that he believes it's explosive trap. I don't know if Nostrum will have enough damage to kill Snail next turn. If it is Explosive Trap, then Ooh. Snail will attack in. Two damage to his face, puts him at 12. Nostum has three from the bow, two from Hero Power, and essentially Animal Companion is always Huffer, so we can expect four extra from that. Yeah, yeah it's a challenging position to be in if you're Snail. I mean, you have to look at this and say, he does have technically the better opportunity to top deck game-ending damage. Snail's mage can probably do a little more overall. Yeah. yeah, not quite enough, even as if this is Huffer. Uh, oh, well, Misha, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Well, but, you know, Misha might even be better in this situation because he's mm -hmm. got two ways to block damage. He has the Misha, which can absorb some damage, some Boopa hits, and then he'll have the Bear Trap because in order for Snail to kill him, he'll have to attack through to the face. So it gives him an extra turn. Next turn, he will have at least five damage with Hero Power mm -hmm. plus the... Uh, Eagle Horn Bow, if he draws into two damage. And one mana off on that Fireball hurts a lot. If he'd been able to play that this turn, that would have been lethal. But you know what? That Arcane Missiles was actually really nice combined with the Azure Drake. Allows him to play the Boombot, hit face for one or for two damage, actually. Now he can throw three in. Okay, if this Boombot hits this face boom for three damage, oh, Snail no. just wins the game. It all comes down to the Boombot. Oh! oh, no! Okay, but Nostum still needs to top deck. He even damage. had the ping. If that had hit for anything, anything other than one. one. Yeah. Wow. And if Nostum picks up two damage here, ooh, but, but there's he no way. But what if it's an explosive trap? Uh, he doesn't. I don't think. He's got no way to trigger he's it. He's got nowhere to trigger it, yeah. And I, I think he only runs one explosive, one bear. So a really close game, yeah. one that uh, was came down to the wire with those boom bots. But in the end, that's 
Snail going up to a 2-0 wow, lead. That was fast. With Tempo Mage. That's impressive. Yeah. What what is uh, uh Snail's last deck is a Warlock deck. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen Snail play on stream yet, I don't believe. So we don't know what Warlock deck he's running, but there seems to be a theme here. If I if I hmm. if I'm correct, probably going to be Zoo. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing uh, definitely a more aggressive theme emerging from mm -hmm. Snail, but you know what it worked for Chalky. It worked really well for Chalky, and honestly, given the rest of his lineup and given what he's up against from Nostum, I think Zoo would put him in the best possible position to close this series out. Yeah, I, I, I was expecting more Tempo Mage, um, and I, we were talking about it you know, a couple days before the broadcast. We expected the split between Tempo Mage and Freeze Mage to be a little bit smaller, mm -hmm. because Tempo Mage does so well against Druid, and so many people brought Druid, and you could guess that so many people would bring Druid. Yeah, Druid, second most represented class in the tournament, mm -hmm. and we don't know exactly how much of Mage was Tempo Mage. We didn't see very much of it in the games that we've yeah. been broadcasting, but on the whole, Freeze has, like you said, been very successful in going the distance. Yeah, There's which a... seems very strange because it is so weak to the Druids, but again, we see a lot of Paladins, a lot of Zulocks, and the Freeze Mage does have a pretty good matchup there, but like we said, it is going to come down to Snail's Zoo Warlock deck, and Nostrum is going to bring out his Hunter for the third time. There's a possibility that every single match with a mage that happened off stream was a tempo mage. And that it would have been about <laughs> even with the freeze yeah. mages. Yeah, but this matchup is, you know, quite similar to the other two. Mm -hmm. it, it comes down to whether or not, uh, same as Secret Paladin, same as Mage, can the Zoo Warlock muster up enough damage or block enough damage to win before the Hunter gets them to zero. And it, at the point that we're looking at right now, I do think there's a very serious possibility that Warlock can at least stave off the major pressure because he does have that golden defender of Argus in his opening mm. hand. No, and we see Nostum with a kind of a disgusted look on his face, that flame juggler hitting face instead of either of the spectral spiders, and that allowed Snail to trade really efficiently and keep what is a pretty big board for turn two? Well, look at this pickup from Nostum, the Knife Juggler. Knife Juggler unleashed the Hounds, one of the strongest combinations in the game when you're facing a deck that tends to build up a large board. Could that help him come back and again? Looks like Nostum's trying to fall behind him. Oh, absolutely. That's exactly what he wanted to see in the Secret Paladin game, but unfortunately didn't have the two cards at the same time. Uh, especially since we see the other Haunted Creeper in Snail's hand, this Knife Juggler Unleash the Hounds could be doing some real work, as well as if he has another Explosive Trap in deck, which we saw last game, that could be really beneficial. Kill Command, not so great right now, but it will come in handy. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, I think a lot of this is going to come down to how much value does Snail get out of this Defender of Argus? Even Juggler Unleash may only be just enough to actually pierce through the... That's not what we were expecting at all there, is Whoa. it? That happened. Opting to... <laughs> I mean, I guess there's silence. no better target, right? It, for him to silence yeah, in a face hunter deck. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Nostrum's not going to play taunts. Yeah, that's wow. true. Uh, making value out of the Iron Beagle when otherwise it, it would be hard to. And we'll see where these juggles land, but this is likely a full board clear plus quite a bit of damage to face. That egg is a problem, but if he doesn't hit it, there's not a super great mm -hmm. activation aside from the Defender, defender wow, of Argus. Wow, it did not pop the egg. And all of a sudden, this game has taken a very different turn. Yeah. With that Defender of Argus not coming down when it did, now it's not going to have the same amount of effect on the board. Peddler's a great pickup here, but will also block Snail out of using that Defender of Argus yet again. And yeah, definitely would have been better if Snail had played Argus last turn. Um, but, he, I mean, he, he couldn't possibly have known that Nostum would have the Knife Juggler and the Unleash the Hounds, but you always have to worry about it when you're extending that many minions onto the board. And all of the cards in Nostum's hand at this point represent additional direct face damage. He's oh, yeah. in a place mm -hmm. where whatever happens here, whatever these turns from Snail look like, he's going to throw everything face and just really work at doing as much damage as possible, getting as much value as he can out of these cards. He does have an activator for Kill Command, that's incredibly significant with the health totals that we're looking at right now. Yeah, absolutely. And there are going to be beasts left on board for the Kill Command. Argent Horse Rider is actually really nice. It, it only represents two more damage, so I would probably still Hero Power this turn and then play the Horse Rider next turn to maximize your damage. But Nostum is getting really, really close to finally taking a win with his Hunter deck. Raven doesn't believe me and thinks I'm trolling when I say that sometimes Doom Guard is too clunky and Leroy's better. <laughs> this is one of those opportunities that I want to point out to him wherever he is. <laughs> 
<laughs> but if you played Leroy here and you got two whelps on your opponent's side of the field, that knife juggler could potentially just snipe the Leroy off the board. Yeah, but at least, <laughs> at least he could use it and not discard cards, okay? <laughs> Yeah, things are going to get crazy here, though, because, I mean, Snail is still only at 7 health. With the quick shot hero power, even if nothing else turns up here, and Anno Companion isn't going to be enough at this point, there's still every likelihood that Snail is dead next turn, no matter yeah. what he does. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The Zoo Warlocks don't run any heals, and there's no way that he's going to end up dealing, you know, 22 damage in one turn, so it looks like No Storm's just going to take this game. Oh, wow, look uh, what happens when you have right two Doom Guards in your hand. You don't one have gets discarded. mana, you don't need two Doom Guards. All right, well, <laughs> all jokes aside, Nostum <laughs> does take a win in the series, which means uh, he's got another life. Mm -hmm. He's now down two to one, so he's still got to beat that Zoo Warlock twice in a row, but he does have the tools to do it. He's got Freege Mage left. I believe his third deck is Paladin? Or Warrior. It's No, his Warrior was banned. His Warrior was banned. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so we're yes. looking at a Paladin, which, I mean, that could go either way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. which, which, you know, those are the kind of series that I like. You got one favorable matchup and one that's just... Just nail biters right down in the nail end. Nail biters, <laughs> yeah. exactly. No, it's very possible that uh, Nostum could actually bring this back. And being mm -hmm. down 2-1 feels a lot better than being down 2-0. And we have seen reverse sweeps t uh, today, actually. Yeah. So, yeah, anything can still happen. I've been playing in a lot of open tournaments lately, and I get stressed in the first round <laughs> of a tournament with a $30 prize pool that awards, like, three Hearthstone World Championship points. I can't imagine what it must feel like to be in a situation where you're playing to qualify for a tournament with a $100,000 prize pool that has implications of qualifying for the Hearthstone World Championship, and this tournament, I believe, has a total accumulation of Hearthstone World Championship points of, like, 50 and, and let's not forget that we're talking about players that, for the most part, we're not dealing in well-known established pros right now. Yeah. We're dealing in Nostum, who is a great player, but not really well-known in mm -hmm. the highest levels of sort of previous success in Hearthstone and a tavern hero. <laughs> yeah. I'm just happy that we got a tavern hero this far. And I mean, he deserves it. He's really playing very well. Yeah. Oh, it was Warlock. That was the other deck. Well, All we right. tried. It was we one tried. of the top yeah, three, yeah. right? We just <laughs> I was like, I know Warrior somebody Warlock. has Paladin. It's something good. But yeah, one th of those. So this is actually even more of a nail biter than the so Paladin <laughs> versus Zoo because they're the wow. same decks. And they're both really good hands. Uh, Nostum's maybe a little bit better because he can go coin two drop, two drop, imp game boss, and now implosion. Do you think we're going to see a sea giant in either of these decks? I love Sea Giants. I don't care if we're going to see it. <laughs> uh, uh, Nostum, uh, I've actually uh, practiced with Nostum a few times, been in a couple calls with him when he's been playing in open tournaments. He tends to like the Sea Giant, and I do believe he's running the, you know, uh, we, we dubbed it like North American Zoo, because Zixo has like the EU Zoo with the double Doom Guards. Mm -hmm. The Chinese Zoo is the one that originated from Duke with the Enhanced Mechano that we saw Chalky running a version of. This one's sort of in between. You okay. run Leroy, and you run Sea Giant, but you have a more consistent early game with no enhancer Meccano. So uh, this is the version that I like the best. And I think it's great in the mirror. Enhanso oh, Meccano coming into Snail's hand. Uh -oh. I actually played a list very similar to this to Legend last month. And the the mirror is probably one of the most stressful matchups because there's just so much decision making in terms of establishing and maintaining the board. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be very difficult for Snail to put a board down and actually get to keep it, especially since Nostum had a really nice start. He's got that implosion in hand. But if he's able to keep that board, and Hanso Meccano could just swing this game so quickly. Yeah, yeah. you have to think what he's going to do at this point is hold it for as long as he can, because the optimal play is to use it when you've got a power overwhelming behind it. I mean, I'd play it right now. Three <laughs> targets. It's pretty good. Hard to say, though, that Direwolf Alpha is a pretty significant pickup. Yeah, Direwolf Soulfire is actually really nice here. You can clear off the Imp Gang boss. You don't want to discard a card, though. So Direwolf Iron Beak Owl might actually be the better way to go. Just to get rid of the Imp Gang boss of yeah. ability to spawn more tokens, yeah. You could break your egg open as well, and then clear off one of the 1-1s one with your Voidwalker. This is one of those swingy matchups, though. Um, Implosion is one of the cards that's sort of the, the culprit of making it swingy, just because... You're removing something off the board, and you're also spawning imps. If, mm -hmm. And if you if one player rolls a four and the other player rolls a two, then it, it makes such a discrepancy within the matchup. So looks like he's going to go with this play. That means he will have an enhanced mechano plus soul fire. But he's running out of cards. Yeah, but you know what? As a warlock, 
you don't ever really need to worry about running out of cards too, too much. We mm. see Nostom does have a much larger hand, but for instance, if he tries to roll Implosion on the Nerubian here and rolls anything but a four, then Snail is still in such a dominant position. Yeah, gonna go ahead and put it on the Voidwalker. Oh, got a four. He does got the get four. the four. Wow. I mean, neither of these players, though, wants to be put in a position where they're forced to do any significant amount of life tapping. Mm -hmm. That's a really important thing to keep in mind, is that they want to sustain as high a life total as possible because there is a lot of burst potential in Zoo. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was talking to Nasim about the mirror, and he, he called the Zoo mirror the age of implosion. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you, you can sort of uh, see why. And uh, this is a, an awkward hand for, for Snail. He has to decide if he wants to discard one of these pretty important four drops and we'll see he, he's running out of cards and I, i'm not sure if who's going to triumph the player with more cards but less of a board or the mm -hmm. player with less cards but a bigger board it's going to come down to what snail can tap into the next couple turns yeah the follow-up plays from nostom here aren't really great either so i honestly like the position that snail is in right now he does have the more assertive board and enhanced mechano can in a second change the outcomes that power overwhelming just changed the outcome he can go ahead and power overwhelm one of the imps clear off the nerubian kill the dire wolf and then oh, wow yeah mortal coil draw his own card Power Overwhelming was, yeah, a great draw. Flame Imp and also is a fantastic draw because it makes his board a lot bigger. He can Flame Imp and uh, Haunted Creeper, which filling up all of your mana at this stage in the mm -hmm. game as a Zuwak player and having follow-up plays is super important. And Snail now, unfortunately, for better or for worse, is going to have to start in life tap. He is going to have to dig for some additional options because he can't sit here and idly ignore the number of threats that his opponent has, as well as be behind in terms of what he can play from hand. Yeah. yeah Snail going to have to get a little bit greedy with his trades. Knife Juggler, you don't want to play it out. The Flame Imp's just going to clear it off really easily. But Enhanced Omikado is such bad value. At this point, you might even have to Knife Juggler and then Soul Fire the Flame Imp. I think you, I think you almost have to risk the Soul Fire here, yeah. It's wow. not pretty, but it's kind of his no. only real good out here. It's necessary, unfortunately. He's thinking about it, though, because that's not... I mean, if he loses that Enhanced Mechano, that's his ace in the hole. That's what he's really hoping for. And he's going to actually decide to hold all of it because that those three cards in his hand represent the burst potential. They represent how he wants to end this game. If you Soul Fire and lose the Enhanced Mechano, that's a problem. But if you don't Soul Fire, you lose the board, which loses the value of the Enhanced Mechano, which means you might as well have just not had it. It's like a black hole. Yeah, e either way, so you're not going to come out on top. <laughs> this is this is one of those uh, no-win scenarios. Yeah. Either way, the Enhanced Mechano is dead weight. Mm -hmm. Get that thing out of there. No Sea Giant Wind Fury this game, guys. <laughs> well, and you have to wonder now, with what Nostum has available to him, is he actually in a much stronger position? Because he's going to be able to build a big board, get a lot of taunts down, protect his life total, and... He has so many threats available to him now that Snail yeah. just really can't answer. Yeah, he needs something super impactful here. And Dark Peddler is a, is pretty good because it allows him to take a one drop that he can then buff with Enhanced Mechanic. But will it be hmm. enough? Do you take the Zombie Chow here just for the body? Uh, yeah, you kind of have to, but... Power yeah. Overwhelming is great if you yeah. get that Wind Fury effect, but you're totally all in on having a body that Enhanced Mechano can hit. If yeah. he has Leroy in the deck, the Power Overwhelming might be good, but he can't even get past those two little taunts. Okay. That's not the one that I expected. Blood Imp. Just, oh my goodness. We're just discussing that the other two cards and ignoring huh. this Blood Imp altogether, but okay. Blood Imp guarantees... Oh, but this Are we going to okay. see Wind Fury? Blood Imp also guarantees that he'll have a target Stack on the board. That Divine Shield on the Argus was actually really nice. It, I mean, it gives him some protection. It means that there's no immediate threat of just getting womboed down by Nostum's existing board. Wait, how come we didn't get the uh, the notification that minions would stealth <laughs> and taunt? <laughs> Innkeeper, you're slacking. Come yeah. on. Reaching for the juggle, see if he can get rid of it. Oh, no. lives to fight another day. It means he's got something to use that power overwhelming on pretty much no matter what, which is really nice, but That's true. it's honestly not, I don't think, enough. Right now, well, you he's, are... He's locked out. Look at this. Lothad blocks him out, and Nostum actually sends so much nine. damage with face. Spells. Oh, wow. <sighs> Can he afford to life... He has to life tap here. Uh, well, let's count the damage on board. So we have... Uh, Lots. Seven, can... 17 <laughs> damage on board. Yeah, so he... either way, he's dead. Mm -hmm. Can he clear off enough? Well, if he clears the 3-2, now he's got... Now that's 12. 14. 14? Oh, no, 9, 12. Yeah, it's 12. It was 14 without... 
if you don't. But that means he are. can't tap, and he doesn't have any way out. Uh, next turn, if he doesn't put down a big taunt or end the game, it's over either way. It's like, yeah. oh no, I can't even reveal this blood if. So he goes ahead and <laughs> concedes, which means Nostum ties the series up two to two. And the matchup left remaining, I believe, is Freeze Mage versus Zoo. Oh, man. We've seen Ooh. a lot of that matchup over the last two days, actually. And surprisingly, the Zoo comes out on top a decent amount of the time, more than it really should, because the Freeze Mage should more actually be... Should. More yeah. than it should. The Freeze Mage should be really favored in that matchup. Yeah. Tell, us, tell us how you really feel about Freeze Mage, <laughs> <Yeah>. though. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, we said it earlier. All of the mm -hmm. players that have qualified so far for the America's Championship had Freeze Mage in their lineup. So this is it then. This is at make least or break. Four, at least four out of five. I can't quite remember Woody Bill, but I'm pretty sure he did have the freeze mage also. So this, this is it then. A mage. We're we're deciding right here, right now. Does freeze mage continue its dominant streak, or does someone finally upset it? And is it a tavern hero from South America? Not only <laughs> is there's so much on the line for Nostum. Oh it's no, he had warrior. warrior. They banned the freeze mage. It was right in front of our faces, and we didn't even see it. <laughs> But you know what? This is even better for Nostum. But he had a mage. Yeah. He had a mage. He had a mage. He no, had this a mage. Is, this is even better for Nostum. Look at this hand. Fiery War Axe, Dread Corsair, <laughs> Armorsmith. These patrons are just going to have a field oh, day man. against Snail's Warlock. Oh, and we oh. haven't seen Patron have much success either, right? No. So this is also a really interesting opportunity. All we had to do was look two feet to our left to see that You know it wasn't what? The bottom of the screen's right. a little cut off. I'm very short. Yeah. Like, meh. Yeah. <laughs> Someone told me not to look at the screen, so I stopped looking at the screen. <laughs> oh, wow. What a yeah. hand from Nostum. Snail's hand actually pretty good, These too. These guys both have really strong openers. Fire War Axe is the key, though. Corkon Elite is actually a fantastic card in this matchup just because it's actually one of the only cards in the game that deals with Imp Gang boss so cleanly. So, yeah. Um, I mean, Cabal Shadow Priest would like a word, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Priest yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, we only saw one Control Priest today, and we didn't see a single Cabal Shadow Priest out of that deck. Shadowward Pain also deals with yeah, it really okay, clearly. Stampeding good. Kodo Stampeding also deals Kodo. with it. Totally Kodo optimal. might be MVP. Yeah. This is going to be interesting, though. I mean, this board right now sets up for Snail some really awesome opportunities, whether it's the Defender of Argus or the Knife Jugglers and all of the juggles that he's going to be able to get using the Haunted Creeper and the Imp Gang Boss. You have yeah. to kind of wonder, does Nostom want to proactively kill off that Haunted Creeper? I, oh, the Unstable Ghoul is really actually very nice, but he could just go ahead and play the Acolyte. Frothing Berserker also has some merit because it will get buffed really nicely. I really like Frothing Berserker here, actually, because even if you're worried about the potential follow-up in terms of knife jugglers, stuff like that, mm -hmm. unless you saw Implosion come down and like cleanly what clear it off the know? board, there's going to be a lot of trading, and that's going to represent a lot of damage that Snail has to respond to. So it, it puts something on the board that merits an immediate action, as opposed to the sort of more passive play of putting the Accolade of Pain down or using the Unstable Ghoul to protect your own life total. This is one of my favorite matchups in the game um, as the Patron Warrior player. I'm, I'm, Warrior is my favorite class by far, and I've played a lot of Patron post-Warsong post, post War Song Commander change. And this is one of those matchups that you're always happy to see, win or lose, just because it's, it's pretty fun to play. There's a lot of many puzzles and, and problems to solve within the matchup, so this is an intricate matchup. More so for the Patron player, but also for the Zoo player, so it's cool to see that this is the game number five of a series that determines who goes to the America's Championship. Yeah, but at the same time, those little choices that they're so gonna have to make throughout the match might be pretty bad for them at this point. They've been playing all day, they played all day yesterday, they're tired, they're fatigued. They just wanna go home at this point. They yeah. wanna get their win and they wanna <laughs> go to bed. So, yeah. I mean, having to make these really pivotal choices and this game is so, so <laughs> significant. I was gonna say, I mean, you say that, but I think they're both very happy to be here. I think they both no, wanna I'm be here sure. right now. Oh, absolutely. On the whole, I mean, I like this play. Snail is going to have a big board that there's no immediate response to. And we know right now that Nostum is, as of yet, not in a position to do anything to establish a big board of patrons and take advantage of this situation. Mm -hmm. No, not at all, but he's going to be able to play the Unstable Ghoul, clear off the majority of the minions. We're assuming Fiery War Axe will go into a Knife Juggler or the Argus next turn. He does still have options. Yeah, he really needs to start drawing into his ways to be proactive on the board, though. Right now, he's just sort of being a little bit defensive. He's trying to stop taking damage. He's trying to make sure that the board is as clean as possible. Moving into the turns where he's going to draw into Death Bite, mm -hmm. Whirlwind's Patrons. None of those pieces yet, so it's still going to be a while. We'll see if Nostrum can hold on long enough to make those impactful. 
Yeah, if he is able to get those pieces together, find the death spike, find the patron, he's got inner rage. A battle rage at that point would be so significant. Then he will almost, you know, definitely win the game just because the patrons are able to take up so much of the zoo board. There's another piece, the whirlwind. Yeah, very nice. Patron comes out, all of a sudden, inner rage whirlwind patrons. Mm -hmm. Super tough for Zoo Warlocks to deal with without a substantial board. Yeah, and Which from this point out, he is on patron mana. Right, and we are we are sort of on Nostum's clock if he pulls the patron, but if he doesn't, Snail has the more threatening board and a lot of opportunity here. He's going to be able to abuse a sergeant that egg, trade it into the core chron elite, even get the knife juggler down ahead of that for the extra juggle, and push a lot of damage. And even right in there, he can life tap, maybe find something else small to play down. Or just doom guard. Who or cares about a knife juggler? Abuse right? a sergeant that egg, doom guard, screw the knife juggler. I mean, it, it advances your game state even faster, and Patron is not one of those things that has a lot of ways to sort of battle back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do see Nostom has the Execute, so he would have been able to deal with the Doom Guard relatively easily, but not before it got five damage to face. The first damage Snail has taken of the game, and it's through a Life Tap. And a Flame Imp, and still, he's ahead, and it, I mean, a six minion board against Patron, there's no brawl. Oh, wow. But the wow. Patrons come into Nostom's hand. It, but it's awkward this turn. Mm -hmm. he, I mean, what he can do is he can just set up the unstable ghoul this turn. It's super risky. He can also just throw out the frothing berserker to try and absorb a little bit more damage. Then next turn, he has enough mana for whirlwind, inner rage, grim patron, and execute to protect it a little bit more. If he drops the frothing and just hero powers, there is a risk that it, with the right juggle, there's enough damage on the board with the Doomguard in hand that he's dead. Yeah, he needs a Whirlwind effect. Just He needs to take off a little bit of damage and weaken the creatures that are on the board. No, I think the Unstable Ghoul is definitely the right play here. It would force Snail to run in uh, at least one of his 3-2s if he wants it to die. He could run in the 4-4 to save the 3-2 minions, but at least three damage will be taken off the board, leaving Snail with, you know, at most he's got Mm, not enough. <laughs> not this enough is a is really the this is a really awkward yeah, turn because you're doing on... a lot of math about what what can Snail mm -hmm. draw into that could end this game. It depends on if he wants to attack in with a three two and let it die, or if he wants to attack with an Arubian. Oh, but he picks up the abusive sergeant to go with the Doom Guard. This is super scary. I think that's actually 12, game. 12 plus 7. 12, that's 14. Good to be a game! The Tavern wow. Hero taking the match and securing his place in next month's Winter Championships. And Nostum knows it. He sees that damage going to face. He saw how confident Snail was in that, and he looks devastated. But oh, look at the fist look at from Snail. Snail. Oh, my goodness. Oh what my a happy goodness. guy. Wow, and Snail looked so stressed out. He looked like he was really getting down, but managed to take those games yeah. three to two. And Nostam, that must feel so terrible. He came back. He was down two and oh, and came back those two games yeah. and looked like he was so ahead. He got the patron finally right on time. But you know what? Snail just had that perfect draw of the abusive sergeant right there. Yeah, it was just too little too late. I mean, starts up 2-0, Snail looks really dominant. The battle back from Nostum, you think, okay, we're in game five. One of these players is going through, and we get a Tavern Hero advancing to the America's Winter Championship. And a South American Tavern Hero at that. Which is incredible. Absolutely incredible. I we mean, knew going in that the South American level of play was right up there, but this is absolutely way more than we expected, and I think it's a thrilling conclusion to that series. That should be inspiration to all the people that think it's so mm -hmm. hard to get into, you know, the competitive scene and get your name out there. But, you know, there's fireside gatherings that are happening across U the U.S., Canada, South America, all the time. So look out in the spring for those, you know, Tavern Hero locations to, to pop up and, and compete in those fireside gatherings. And this is literally what the Hearthstone Championship Tour is all about, giving the underdogs a chance to mm -hmm. really shine and get their way to the Hearthstone World Championships later on this year. Snail could not have been a better success story. And let's keep an eye out for him because there is every possibility that his ticket to the Hearthstone World Championship gets punched at the America's Winter Championship next month. Yeah, mm -hmm. the winner gets that automatic seed. Uh, but I, you have to give a little bit of credit to Nossum as well. We, we saw a, a multiple games uh, of him throughout the day yesterday, and he had a good deck lineup. He still struggled with that patron a little bit at the end. But other than that, I think he played well, and he'll get those extra points 
moving forward towards the spring season where we'll have another chance and some prize money. But we do have Dan standing by, who I believe might have a winner interview uh, with Snail from last match. Thank you very much, TJ. Congratulations, Snail. Once again, as the cast have mentioned, a great story to see a Tavern Hero be able to go all the way uh, from there, Latin America, to here in Los Angeles from March 11th, 13th for the America's Championship. Uh, last year, we did have a couple of players from that region come up to the finals, but this year, this one has been completely earned uh, from the beginning. So let's go ahead and check in with our winner and see how Snail is doing off of his win. How you doing, man? Hi, man. I'm doing great. I'm so excited. Uh, you look excited for sure. Can you talk about what it's I like know. being the first Tavern hero to make it, the only Tavern hero, actually, to make it through the process to the Winter Finals? I don't know. I just want to play. and I keep playing. I, I didn't even look at the bracket. I just keep playing and playing, and, well, here I am. You know, not too many people know the region of Latin America, let alone within Argentina. Most people think yeah. about Brazil and, and the area there, but what's the scene like down there at the very bottom of South America? Huge, actually. We make like a, a fireside one or two months uh, between. Um, there is like 100 at least players here. We have like a small, but at the same time for our country is pretty big. Oh, that's awesome. You know, a lot of people really underestimate Latin America, but I think a lot of people will be put on notice. Do you think this is a big win also for your region as well? Not just necessarily for your country or for yourself, but I think this is a big win for Latin America to show that you guys really love Hearthstone and you guys are really good too. Yeah, we love Hearthstone and we have a lot of good players too. Nagidan is known in the scene. Uh, he's a really good player. There are a lot of known uh, Brazilians uh, players too. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Awesome. Well, you're going to be coming all the way here to America I for am, a chance yeah. to compete. Uh, what are you most excited about coming to the finals here in California? The travel, I guess. Uh, I've never been to the USA before. Uh, I've been to Mexico nearby, but not there. All right, cool, man. We don't want to take too much of your win uh, from the moments away from the people you're celebrating with. Do you have any final words Thank you me. want to say before we let you go? Yeah, shout out to my team. Um, they are... Amazing guys. A shout, shout out to my girlfriend, who is always there by my side, you know, LAN events. And I think that's it. Thank you for letting me play. Oh, one more thing, if I can. Sure. Please, sir, please help me win the, with the visa. All so right. I can well, travel. we'll definitely have to get that for you, because uh, you're going to yeah. need one to come, I, I suppose. Well, <laughs> congratulations, Snail. We'll see you Thank in you, a man. month. And hopefully, uh, you know, you'll carry your good play and luck all the way through. Thank you. All right, so yet another person who has punched his ticket to the finals happening in just a couple of weeks. Remember, one person who wins out of those eight players will be going straight to BlizzCon as a direct seed from the Americas region, as well as every single region from Americas to Europe to Asia Pacific, as well as China. Thank you so much, everybody, who's tuned in as well. Let us know what you guys think about that. I'm sure the Latin American community is very passionate to see one of their players go through. It is Snail from the Argentinian region. Check it out and let us know what you guys think by hashtagging HCT on social media. Go do it at Play Hearthstone, or you can do it on Facebook.com slash Hearthstone as well. When we come back, we're going to have yet another match. It's going to be Admirable, the caster that people are known for the big beard, up against another underdog in all sky high we saw at the very beginning of the day. So don't go anywhere. When we come back, more Hearthstone action here in the Winter Preliminaries.